Um, I basically got out of film school and, and like everybody else, I didn't have a job because I didn't have any connections. I didn't know anybody. I didn't have any family connections to get in. So I basically had to figure out a way. And I like to say that um, instead of like climbing over this wall uh, one at a time to get into the industry, the mythical wall that surrounds Hollywood, um, we all kind of got together and walked in the front door together. And, and I think that's that's kind of the way it, it can work if you if you develop a coalition of, of, of you know, friends and and artists that are like minded and are working together to you know, to break into an industry or, 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 to, or to redefine it. I started working as a camera assistant because I knew a lot about cinematography. I, I liked editing the most, but, but I, wasn't, I wasn't finding any work. So what I was finding is work as a, as a camera assistant, as a focus puller, uh, dolly grip. You know, in those days, I could, I could work three or four days and make enough money to cover, you know, a month uh, of looking for other jobs and writing and, and hanging out with my friends because I was young and I didn't have uh, a family. And so it was easy to sort of, you know, uh, live hand to mouth. Um, but I always want to get back to the editing room because I really loved that. And uh, uh, a good friend of mine, James Gray, who I went to school with at film school, USC, he somehow put together a independent film that he was going to make. And he got the money together. And uh, and we were all sort of couldn't believe that it was happening. And he's like, we all got it. We all got to work on it. It's like, you know, it was our first big shot to make a movie. But of course, the studio had. You know, they wanted to get a, an editor on that picture that had some experience because James had never directed anything before. So James said, you're going to be the assistant editor. And I'm going to tell uh, the editor that you have they have to hire you. Just do it. You can do it. Uh, they hired uh, the editor they hired was this one of the greatest people on Earth, this woman named Dorian Harris, who's one of my favorite people still to this day. So I went to New York and I did dailies for, for James uh, on that movie in New York by myself. Dorian and uh, Brian Johnson, who was her first assistant, they stayed in L.A., which were, where the movie was going to be cut. This was all shot on film. Absolutely one of the greatest experiences of my life. It was like, you know, New York in a winter. They put me up at Sound One. We shot in a terrible winter in, in, in Brighton Beach. Uh, and it was this crazy uh, Russian mob picture. It's a really good movie. James did a great job. I think we shot, you know, 200,000 feet of film, which is nothing. And uh, Dorian put it together beautifully. And it was it was a real fast experience. But that was my first job as an apprentice editor. And uh, I got bumped up to assistant. I got enough hours to get into the union. And um, and, you know, from there, I was off and running. And, and in terms of like I, I had a, a foothold and one job has sort of led to the next. And I did my best because I knew it was a, a privilege. When I finished that movie, I got a call a few months later from another film school friend of mine, Tia Nolan. We need an apprentice right away because our apprentice just quit. I'm like, oh, my God, uh, since I understood what it meant to be an editor. But I ended up on that crew on that movie, which was a small independent Miramax movie. That was really the beginning. Being in the right place at the right time is you just can't say that enough. And, and being available. It's a craft. It's something that you, you learn to do really good over over thousands of hours of doing it. And, you you know, you get better at it, learned a lot um, just being a fly on the wall. And James called and said, hey. I am really close to getting this script that, that I had been reading and doing notes on a movie called The Yards. He said, I want Jeff to cut the movie. You know, you're just pushing, right, to get somewhere because it's something you love to do because it's your passion. Well, if you put yourself in the right place at the right time and you're passionate about doing something and you're available to do it, eventually you're going to get a shot. And when that shot happens, you're going to find out if you're good and if you can stay in the game. And And I think a lot of it is that. Like, I mean, I happened, I was blessed with, you know, I have the ability to do it and I love doing it. So it's not a strain or a stress on me. It actually, I actually feel better. A lot of directors are like that. It's interesting. You work with them. It, it's, it's someone that you have this relationship with that it, it, it's a bond that you have. So I'm the luckiest person in the world. And, and the intensity of the experience is very different than when, you know, you're, when you go back to civilian life, <laughs> editing is something I enjoy doing. It relaxes me. It's interesting. There is a, there is a bond that you make when you're on a, on a movie together and there's some, there's a camaraderie and a collaboration. That's why also I love filmmaking. I think is it's not solitary in a lot of ways, like other art forms. I mean, if you're writing a novel, you're kind of in a room by yourself. You might get feedback from an editor or a colleague and, and, and make revisions. Filmmaking is, you know, a constant series of collaborations. I just had one simple rule, which was don't let anybody down. It doesn't mean you, every movie has to be a hit or every movie has to be perfect or every Every movie has to be a masterpiece or an Oscar winner. But if you do your best and you honor them and you tell the truth and you're a good person, you know, in terms of like you're, you're trustworthy, they can count on you. You don't let them down. That's it. And if you like the job and you're good at it you, and people can count on you, you're done, man. You can you're going to have anything you want in this industry. That's the key. Good people who work hard and are good at their jobs, like any industry that you'll find, are prized. That's not if you're good at editing or assisting and people like hanging out with you and you're you're good to be in the room with and you have a good personality and you enjoy it and you have a good energy you're going to work because there aren't a lot of those people the ability to collaborate means there's a level of commitment present 
That's why I look for an assistant. I look for, for somebody who's, man, this person has my back and they also want to edit someday. They want to move up. They want to work their way up the process. We want to invite people into the industry that are going to make it a better place. That means invite people who are going to tell better stories and make better movies. Th those are the people that you hire again and again are the people that have exciting ideas and passion about keeping this art form going. If you see something that's being made by somebody that you really want to work on, go for it. Try it. Be respectful. Contact them. Ask them if they can work on it. If you can get a foot in the door on something that you really love, it's a win and it will lead to more work if you do a good job. It's a job where if you do a good job, you'll get another one.